you know, you start looking at uh, meat yield, uh, it was a little different. I mean, it's a little higher, 69 to probably 71, 72, depending on what study, what criteria we're talking about, breast meat total weight, breast meat yield. So mm -hmm. it would differ there a little bit. Welcome to the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we cover the latest in poultry nutrition research uh, and industry trends in approximately 10 minutes. My name is Sam Rochel. I'm an associate professor of poultry nutrition at Auburn University and one of the co-hosts of the show. Uh, this is actually a second part to a conversation I had with uh, Dr. Bill Dozier, my former major professor and current colleague here at Auburn, uh, where in the first episode we talked about uh, the fundamentals of properly designing and executing a dose titration experiment to estimate amino acid requirements and all the, the fundamentals that underlie those types of experiments. In this next episode, we're going to talk about how he applied, recently applied, along with a graduate student, Tanner Wise, those approaches uh, to really hone in on the isoleucine to lysine uh, ratios for modern broilers at different market ages, as well as uh, kind of the future and what that holds for estimating amino acid responses. So appreciate you listening to the, the last episode and understanding those fundamentals and uh, excited to, to have you for the, the second episode. And then another thing, uh, you know, on these, you're, you're really looking at defining the ratio of isoleucine to lysine more than the total isoleucine requirement. Um, so what do you, how do you handle the lysine uh, in the diet when you do that? You know, we, you know, if you had to, if we were doing a requirement study, you know, you would uh, obviously want to have um, lysine probably at about 105 or so per percent, mm -hmm. make sure it was adequate. But when we're doing ratio work, we like to uh, <clears throat> ensure that these birds do not overconsume lysine so that we're not underestimating our ratio. So, uh, and by doing so, you know, it can range anywhere from a, you know, like I'd say on the lower end of a 92% mm -hmm. of what I would, think would perceive the requirement to be maybe up to a 95% range. You just, you don't want that bird to overconsume lysine and impact that ratio. Yeah, yeah. So just to clarify for everyone, lysine is your denominator. So if yeah. it's higher than it should be, then that messes up the entire ratio. So you're ensuring that the bird is maxing out his lysine utilization so the the ratio is, is relevant which as we discussed is different if you're just trying to get maximum response for the total dietary requirement but that's a little less stable than the ratio at, at least we think yeah we really like really formulating on ratios as opposed to a requirement because that requirement is just for that fixed study mm -hmm. that we're evaluating on so if we have solid lysine requirement data and then we can apply these ratios to the lysine and feel like that's more universal in terms of its application and uh, we certainly don't have a lot of uh, opportunities to do uh, requirement work as you know it's very laborious and mm -hmm. for each individual amino acid so if we can establish these ratios then feel like that's more applicable you know, across different kind of scenarios. Sure. And so uh, you, you got the experiment set up at, uh, using the, the principles that we talked about, and then you've got these different uh, age ranges or weight ranges. And so how did the ratios, did they come out kind of where we thought they were? Um, you know, exact numbers don't matter so much, but just going into it. it ratios in terms of growth, I mean, we're looking 66 to 68 relative to lysine, digestible lysine. You know, I, you know you, I thought going in we would be somewhere between a 67 and 68. So very, very close there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you start looking at uh, meat yield. Uh, it was a little different. I mean, it's a little higher. 69 to probably 71, 72, depending on what study, what criteria we're talking about, breast meat total weight, breast meat yield. So mm -hmm. it would differ there a little bit, but yeah, uh, 
I do think that we need to, uh, that we're looking, wanting to optimize yield, that we probably need to be at a ratio of 69 or, or possibly, you know, 70. But I, I think we, 69 is fine, whereas we, we're looking at growth, we make an optimize that at about 67, 68. So but there's some movement there that people can look at. But, you know, in some of these studies where we're seeing total breast meat yield, it, you know, it may vary, you know, 0.4 to 0.8 percent more per mm -hmm. bird. I mean, some work I've seen it a little higher than that, about 1%. But I mean, it's not like, not the response we would see with lysine. It's much lower, but, you know, still though, uh, we're processing a million birds and we get a 0.35, 0 0.4% increase in total breast meat. And, you know, depend on the price of breast meat yield, that can really impact the return. So, yeah. Absolutely. And then the final thing to kind of think about in this, so you've got the, the challenge of, of the, you know, thinking about the co-limitation with valine, and then both of those requirements are going to be impacted by leucine. And so we keep, uh, you know, there's more and more attention around this as we get a lower protein diet, you have a higher proportion of corn. So the, the relative leucine proportion goes up. Um, how do you think that plays into the work that, that you and Tanner did? Um, and, you know, moving forward as, as we really think about branch chains. Yeah, and that's a good point that we really look, you look at several different data sets. Uh, obviously, over time as a bird ages, sometimes we'll see these subtle increases in ratios of isoleucine to mm -hmm. lysine. And I've often wondered if this is probably what we're seeing as an indirect response to leucine that as more corn enters into percentage of corn enters into the diet you've got more leucine you know from a relative standpoint and so we may be seeing that isoleucine response you know you've got that balance or interaction with these branch chains so yeah and it's something we may not oftentimes really think about in that context but from a practical standpoint, yeah, you, I mean, it may see that as one of the reasons why we can see a slight, you know, an increase in our ratio. Absolutely. Makes sense. Well, it's a, it's a, a important subject, you know, sometimes it's not always the flashiest research, but uh, it has to be designed properly and executed properly. And, and the end result, the data that we get from these types of trials um, have a long lasting impact because when these experiments are done correctly, you know, these numbers can hang around for a long time yeah. and be the foundation for a lot of stuff moving forward and also, uh, you know, currently very economically important too. So appreciate all your, all your work in that area. Yeah. And we're seeing more and more uh, of this trend that seems like with isoleucine coming into diets in the future. And as the demand increases on amino acid, we obviously see the price go down. Mm -hmm. And as price goes down, obviously we'll, see more and more of the product entering into commercial formulation. So it's very, very important that way. So I've seen it across my career, uh, you know, starting out at, you know, early on, I saw lysine that way, then threonine followed, and then uh, valine, and now isoleucine, and we're seeing arginine pop up in place as well. So. Uh, I certainly, uh, I think there's some opportunities there, and as well as even tryptophan in terms of uh, there's some niche situations, uh, particularly on layers or, or breeders and possibly with pullets in terms of we look at piling and actual behavior too. So uh, I think the next big movement, you know, functionality, I think it's going to be a big, big movement too, obviously. Sure with some of these amino acids and as well so yep the 2023 arkansas nutrition conference technical symposium is brought to you by carrie proven on the farm trusted on the plate 
Let our technologies help make your production goals a reality. Learn from the experts how carbohydrates improve nutrient utilization. Gut health technologies differ by type. Innovative ways to feed and a novel technology that will light your performance on fire. See us August 29th in Little Rock. Yeah, this is when it, it's going to get really tricky because a lot of these things are situational. And so the, the situations are going to dictate uh, the limitation probably as we get further down. And so that, that makes it a little bit harder to design these uh, perfect experiments to really nail down. But um, good, uh, good opportunity for, for future research, for sure. Yeah, and I, I would leave this to graduate students or anyone looking as we go down in limitation that certainly, you know, we have to really strongly consider our number of rep replications mm -hmm. because our response might not be like what we would typically see, say, in a lysine titration. And yep. uh, so you've got to balance that response versus, you know, have an adequate replication to uh, really define that true and accurate, res you know, good, difference there so absolutely we appreciate the insight and uh, look forward to additional research you're, you're back on uh, faculty now and doing a little bit of research but i know you spend most of your time out in the field uh, through your extension appointment and working directly with producers but uh, i think that's going to be a big asset too to be able to translate this information to them and then bring back you know what are the next right. next nutritional questions too so Really appreciate the opportunity, Sam, to uh, really share uh, some of this data and I look forward to doing more of this in the future. You bet. Thanks again for your time and thanks to you all for listening and uh, we appreciate you following the show and, and look forward to the next one. Thanks and have a great day. Hey everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. And if you have a poultry and nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us, feel free to email the research link, uh, the paper where we can find it, or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com. And I look forward to hearing from you.